good day to you all my subscribers and non subscribers too in today's episode or class we will be looking at a midsummer's night dream by william shakespeare i'll be giving a plot account summarizing the play yes as a literature teacher we encourage our students to read the play yes we do that in fact I ensure that all my students, we act the play, they take turns in taking various roles, they even come with costumes. Yes, even though the scheme of work might state you should teach that book for just two weeks, sometimes I go the extra mile. I take up to four weeks, then I, I just I come up with compliment, supplementary classes because most students, a good number of them, always find it difficult reading Shakespearean text. And the kind of question for Shakespearean texts are called context questions. I have a video on how to answer questions on William Shakespeare's text. You can watch that to further understand. Anyway, based on the requests I've been getting, I would just summarize the play. So that while you're... I am not summarizing the play for you not to read the main one. I would do this so that while you're reading, you can, you know, work hand in gloves with the summary i have already provided it will really guide you okay please do not just abandon what you are to do and focus only on the summary please i beg of you neck wired you're going to see 20 questions from this text so you can't afford to fail anyway Let's look at the dramatist Persina. Theseus, he's the Duke of Athens. Hippolyta, the Duke's wife to be. They later got married at the tail end, I think, Act 5. Egeus, the father to Hermia, or Hermia, I'm not sure of the pronunciation. Lysander, Hermia's love interest. Demetrius. Demetrius is also a young man who loves Hermia, but she doesn't love him. Hermia and Lysander are head over heels in love with each other. Now, Hermia in love with Lysander, daughter to Egeus. Are you getting that? She's a daughter to Egeus. Helena, she's in love with Demetrius, but he doesn't love her. He loves Hermia. Philostrate is the master of the revels to Theseus. Prince, a carpenter. Oberon, king of the fairies. We all know fairies. Whenever we hear fairies, we're always happy. Fairy, fairies are like good luck charm and all that. Puck or Robin Goodfellow. He's also a fairy. He's like the prankster of Obreon. Snog, a tinker. Bottom, a weaver. Flute, a blower mender. Snort, a toyker. Stablin, a tailor. Peace blossom. Cobweb. Moth, a must, mustard seed. All fairies. Now, those other guys in between, like Snog, Bottom, Flute, Snort, they are called the mechanics they are like actors they they were they were rehearsing for a play you know in this particular play there's a play within a play and a typical shakespearean play has five acts five acts and at least about a maximum of about three scenes minimum of one scene or so or two scenes okay so let's go to the plot accounts like i said this video won't take so much it's listen like do not Rely on this video alone. As you're reading the book, you le you also watch the summary. It will make you understand Shakespearean text better. Because they are going to bring out lines. They're not going there's not going to be any um theory question on Shakespearean text. They will never give you a theory question. It's basically objective. Now they're going to screen they are going to bring out an extract from any acts they like and ask you who was speaker a who was speaker b where did it take place what what was the reason for that conversation who did you know stuff like that if you've not read the text how will you do okay let me summarize it it's a very interesting one i love it okay yeah a midsummer night dream is set in athens greece there is a feeling of love anxiety prosperity and rebellion in the air theseus and hippolyta both noble and wealthy are preparing for their marriage celebration. Hermia and Lysander are in love. 
but another Athenian named Demetrius love Hermia. Lysander and Hermia, who are in love, want to get married against her. But Hermia's father, Igios, wants her to marry Demetrius. Igios goes to complain to first Hermia and Demetrius into marriage. Theseus does not necessarily agree with Igios' logic, but he wants Hermia to follow the order. The implication is that Hermia either faces death penalty or goes to a convent. Despite the aforementioned possible consequences, Hermia and Lysander plan to elope to a forest in order to have secret marriage at his aunt's house, where Athens' laws will have little or no effect. Now, in those days, this issue of, you know, patriarchy is not just an African thing. The issue of fathers chosen wives, you know, just that, you know, they, they seem to have abolished most of those principles faster than the, we Africans. You know, just my opinion. Okay, so, a father had the right then, this, we are talking about the 16th or 17th century, a father had the right to choose a spouse for the daughter. You understand? Not in this era where, oh, I love him, I will marry him. A father had the sole right, he had the veto to choose a spouse. And thou, and now, as a daughter, if you decide to go against your father, according to the Athenian law, law of Athens, you are either put to death for disobeying your father. You can imagine how that society was reading with patriarchy. You are put to death or you, are, you remain a nun because there is no in-between. You can never disobey your father according to the law. And that was Hermia's dilemma. She was in love with Lysander. They loved each other so much. But the father doesn't want Lysander. You know, fathers always have a way of, you know, they seem to know, they want to. Of course, I know, did her father love her? Yes. He would always want the best for her. But the, his best might not have been what she wanted. But he wanted her to marry Demetrius, this other guy who loves her mere too. But... You know, she doesn't love Demetrius. She, she she wanted to follow her heart. You know, love is love is a powerful thing. You don't expect your daughter to marry someone she doesn't want to. And that was Hermia's dilemma. Her father was unbothered. So she, she was so stubborn, so he decided to take her to the king. Theseus, who was then. That is from Act 1. If you're reading Act 1, at the beginning, Theseus is talking to his wife about their wedding that should take place in three nights or was it four nights and they're discussing and they, those ones come in and um he just starts complaining how his daughter is disobedient and telling him to decree the law you understand it's, as much as Theseus understands this love thing he also tells the daughter you understand that hmm, the truth is if you want to if you insist on marrying this guy you will die or you'll be in fact you can't according to Athens, you can't even marry him there is nobody that will join you together and everything ended on a sad note that particular scene the father showing the king demetrius and hermia rejecting demetrius it was a really sad one for all parties involved Igios feel like his daughter is disobeying him lysander is hurt because his prospective father-in-law doesn't like him Demetrius is hurt because the lady he loves doesn't love him. And know that. But she was given a warning and every other character exist, exited the stage. And you could see Lysander consoling her. Telling her that the course of true love never runs smooth. Meaning, has she ever heard a story about true love that went so smoothly? There was either one hindrance or another. Either one hindrance or another. The course of true love, most times, is usually tragic. You understand? And towards the end of the play, we'll see the play within a play. It was also that true love. So trying to console her. Then he now gave a marvelous idea about, you know, an auntie has. She doesn't live in Athens. That they can run to her, to a forest. Then they can get married secretly at his auntie's house. And the law will not be binding and to have no effect because they did not get married in Athens. So the law can't have any effect. Their plan is to elope, run away. That is how, you know, they are teenagers. These are young girls we are talking about. They are teenagers. So... <laughs> they might not be ration rational at this point. They're just two people in love. And they discussed it. 
So, let's continue. Helena hears that Lysander and Hermia are running away, and she informs the mistress of the development with the hope that he will love her back. To keep up with the plan, the mistress decides to follow Hermia. Helena as well. This infuriates the mistress, who does not love Helena. Instead of leaving him alone, Helena continues to follow him around and begs him for love. Now, this is Helena. Another character. Hermia's very good friend. You know, sisters from another mother. That one loves the guy Hermia doesn't want, but the guy doesn't love her. And she's so obsessed with him. And she thought she could have his love. So she, she, she overheard Lysander and Hermia planning to elope. So she, she thought that if she told Demetrius, who would be so hot that Hermia doesn't love him to the point that she's ready to run away and leave her father and her family, everything behind. Then who will be so hot, who will have no choice than to just love her. That was all Helena's plan. And he said he's going to follow them to that bush, because he so much love her. And Helena, you know, also said, okay, she'll also follow Demetrius to the bush too. And Demetrius is angry. Why are you following me all about? I don't love you. <sighs> Helena was so obsessed with that guy. Okay. So first of all, we now move the next part of the play goes to the woods. They are in the wood, the forest. The couple's father run into a nearby forest where they encounter many fairies. The fairy queen Titania and the fairy king Oberon are in a in a feud over an Indian boy whom Titania took from Oberon. Oberon orders another fairy, Puck, to squeeze a love potion into Titania's eyes, which will cause her to fall in love with the first thing she sees. After waking as an act of revenge, so as to humiliate her, Puck is also asked or ordered to put the potion into Demetrius' eyes. But Oberon sees Demetrius acting rudely towards Helena. Okay, now we know fairies bring good luck. He, we've never heard, you know, Africans, we know about fairies because of American history and the movies we watch and whatever. You know, originally, fairies is not an African thing. Good. We know fairies from the movies we watch. And all that. I want to know fairies bring good luck. Good luck charm. They want the best for everyone. They always try to effect poetic justice. In the sense that they punish the bad one. And they exalt the good one. That's what you know about fairies. Now this is the spirit land. This is the forest. These are fairies. Humans can't see fairies. But fairies can see humans. Now. Obron is the king of fairies. Titania is the queen. It doesn't mean they are married. They are not married. They are just two people in their own kingdom or queendom, you know, running their own things. And they happen to meet, you know, understand. In fact, at the beginning, Oberon was like, are you here for the wedding? Because they both came because they know the king is getting married and all. So that's, that's about that. And they love to spread good, good wishes wherever they go. You know, flags of joy, like Widow of the Treasure Trove. That is what fairies do. But this particular two fairies are having a feud. You know how power now, power is so intoxicating. Oberon accuses Titania of taking a changeling boy. It was an Indian boy that Oberon captured to be with him. But Titania took him from Oberon. So Oberon is so angry. I need that boy back. You understand? God is a human. But Titania is saying that she promised the boy's mother to look after the boy. And when the woman was dying, that she cannot release the boy to Oberon. So there's a feud over this human that they both have. Oberon is angry. And he said, okay, he knows what to do. Now he, holds, he knows of this flower. Uh, if as you're reading, I've forgotten the name of the flower. I've forgotten the name, but there's this flower. It's more like a portion that you know when you squeeze the flower, the liquid that come out. If it touches a person's eye, the person becomes hypnotized. The first thing the person see, the person will fall in love. Be it an animal, a, be it an animal, a spirit, or a, as far as the person sees that thing, the person is already in love. Now Oberon said. For Titania withholding that boy from him, he's going to humiliate her. He's going to put that portion in the queen's eyes. And even if it's a human being, she sees she'll fall in love with that human being. Even if it's an animal, she'll fall in love with that animal. Just so that he can humiliate her for taking the boy, for challenging his authority. You know now, they are both royalties. Now, as Oberon was planning with Puck, Puck is like his right-hand man. He's, you know, he does all his bad job. He does all his dirty works for him. Puck is highly manipulative and corny. Now, as Oberon is giving Puck an order to go and get the flower, he witnessed the scene. Lysander and Helena are already in the Hermia are already in the bush. 
planning on their escape. Demetrius, because of the news he heard from Helena, he's trying to come to the bush to, to find Hermia. Now, Helena follows him because she's in love with him. She won't just let him be an upfront witness a scene of Demetrius talking down on Helena like, can you just leave me alone? Why are you, why are you so obsessed with me? That was not what he said literally. But I am summarizing the book so that as you're reading, you see it. You understand? He's, he's shouting at her, telling her that why do you follow me all over the place? You understand? That isn't she. He even asked that, are you, are you not scared that I could do something to you? How can you come? He, because she's a virgin, how can you carry your body and follow a man to a bush where there are no humans? Are you not worried? She doesn't seem to mind. Obron is not happy because the girl has an innocent heart. She seems to love this guy. The guy doesn't love the girl. So Obron as a fairy, you know, fairy spread goodwill. His plan is the remaining juice from that love portion, from that flower that we squeeze it in Demetrius' eyes so that when he wakes up and sees Helena, he will fall in love with her. Because the girl is obviously obsessed. So let's keep reading. Meanwhile, elsewhere in the forest, a group of peasants is rehearsing performance of a play which they will perform at Theseus and Hippolyta's marriage. Puck decides to fool around and put a donkey head on one of the peasants' bottom. All of bottom peasant friends run as soon as they see him. Puck then embarks on his journey to put the portion in Demetrius' eyes. Unfortunately, Puck mistakenly places the portion in Lysander's eyes. Lysander wakes up, sees Helena as the first person present in the scene, and ends up falling in love with her. Puck, not aware of this mistake yet, carries on with his job and also put the portion in Titania's eyes. She wakes up and falls in love with the donkey-headed bottom. Now, Puck now, he saw a group of guys. That was Act 3, right? Was that not Act 3 or Act 2? Yeah, yeah, either Act 3. I can't remember. They were rehearsing a play, you know, that to present for Theseus. And he, saw, he sees one of these um, actors and he puts a, an, a donkey's head. You know, they have all these costumes. He puts a donkey's head on the actor. Now, others saw it and thought it was a real donkey or a human being or a beast. You understand? A human being with uh, animal face and they run away. And the bottom is just there moving all over the place. Puck was just being mischievous. And at the same time, Puck, um, Obron, as Puck brought the flower to Obron, Obron, that is the king, Obron collected one, the portion to go and squeeze into Tanya's eyes as she was sleeping so that he will humiliate her. At the same time, he now told Obron that let him go further into the bush. He will see an Athenian man dressed in Athenian garments. You know, they have the, what they wear. And all he told him was Athenian man in an Athenian garment. Squeeze it in his eye. The lady he sweet loves him, but he doesn't love her. He's being nasty to her. He doesn't like it. Fairies love, you know, they love goodwill. They love to help humans. They are more like our friends, you know, in quotes. So, Puck said, okay. And what did Puck do? He went into the bush. He spotted an Athenian man in Athenian garment sleeping. Guess who it was? Lysander. What Obron did not know is that there were two Athenian men in that bush at that moment. There were two Athenian men in that bush, in that forest at that moment. He did not have that information. So, Puck. I won't say Puck did the wrong thing because he followed the instruction. He saw an Athenian man in Athenian garment. And he squeezed the juice into Lysander's eyes. You understand? He squeezed the juice into Lysander's eyes. And that is that about that. And um, he went back to Obron. Obron also went to Titania who was sleeping, the queen. And he squeezed the juice into Titania's eyes and said, the first thing you see when you wake up is who you fall in love with. As it was going on, Titania wakes up. And, for, and the first thing she see is that ass. That human being with an ass face, that's his bottom. That is the donkey's head placed on his head. The donkey's, you know, face placed on his head. She falls in love with it immediately. You understand? While at the same time, Lysander wakes up and the first person he sees is Helena. Helena, <gasps> Hermia's friend. Sorry. Lysander wakes up and um, as he woke up, he, he spotted Helena and he fell in love with her immediately. In fact, he even left Hermia there sleeping on the floor. On a good day, he dare not leave her because there might be snakes or creeping things. And Lysander starts professing love to Helena. Hey, come and see confusion. Helena is so confused. Let's keep reading. Later that night, Puck learns of his mistake with Lysander. 
He tries to correct it and fix the situation by putting the portion in Demetrius' eyes. Meanwhile, Titania and Bottom continue their newfound love fever. Yes, Titania was even assigned fairies to her lover. She assigned cobweb moth, mustard seed, and peace blossom to serve Bottom. She was so in love with the guy that she said they should serve him whatever he wants, they should give it to him. <laughs> Can you imagine? She's in love with an ass. That was so humiliating. Like she loves it's a don't this is not someone she'll love on a good day. But it's like she's literally in love with a donkey. <laughs> While Obron tells Puck, you've made a mistake. The wrong man have fallen in love with the wrong woman. This man is already in love with someone else. Puck, Puck is like, ah, boss, you told me I think young garments. Then, you know, he learns of the mistake he made. So, okay, i go and correct it. He now enters again. He now spots another man. So, oh, this must be the man. You understand? He now puts the juice into Demetrius' eyes. Demetrius woke up. The first person he saw to was Helena. So, as he stands now, Yes, the play which is the climax when Puck accidentally plays the plot shot in the eyes of Demetrius, which caused him to fall in love with Helena. These sudden changes causes Helena to hesitate and question their true motive, as she believes that Demetrius and Lysander are only mocking her. However, Hermia begins to argue with Helena, blaming Helena for stealing Lysander from her, not knowing what to think. Helena runs off into the woods, while Demetrius and Lysander also wander off to settle their quarrel. As the young Athenians go to sleep in the woods, Puck squeezes the love potion into Lysander's eyes and declares that in the morning, everyone shall return back to normal. So, H Helena, Lysander one side, Demetrius and another, all of them say, saying, I love you. All of a sudden, Demetrius is in love with her. If it was only Demetrius, she would say it's, he has a change of heart. But even Lysander that loves her friend to death is saying, I love you. I don't love Hermia. What have I been doing with her? Why haven't I been with you? She said, ah, uh, you know, I won't use me catch crews. No, no, no. <laughs> Oh, I see, I see. Ah, Hemia. Hemia now came. Surprised that her own boyfriend is in love with Helena. Hemia's like, Helena, do you snatch my boy guy away from me? Helena is like, no, babe, you are part of this, right? Because no man loves me. You guys want to use me and catch you. See, you should just perform like you love her. You are literally mocking me. Ah, babe, ah, now you win this one. No wahala. And the men are still professing love. And she's like, stop it. You don't love me. You, you love Hemia. And you, I have loved. You will see it as you are reading when she was talking. I have loved you for a long time. You don't love my smile. You don't love anything about me. It is Hermia you loved. All of a sudden, you love me. And this man has still professing love. Hermia is so confused. She's angry. Helena is so confused. She's angry with Hermia. Because she thinks Hermia. She says, Hermia, you're supposed to be my friend. Make sure as you are listening to this summary, you read. When you read, you will know the parts you are. You will now listen to the, sum the parts I'm summarizing. She's so hot. Helena is so hot. Because why would my friend plot with her boyfriend and the man that loves her to just hurt me because I'm the most lonely girl in the world or what? They're using me to catch crews. The lady is pained. Guys, I, the lady is pained. The lady, they vex. So she, she runs away from the scene. Because two men professing on dying love. It's weird. When I could barely get one to love me. God. You know. So that's how she leaves. And Lysander and Demetrius, you know they're ready to fight. They want to go and prepare a wrestle to see whoever wins. We have Hel Helena's love. That, that, that is the one that scatter her brain. Say, no, 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 this has to be mockery. And she, she runs away somewhere into the bush. And these two men are saying they will go and plan a place. So Puck realizes his mistake again. And Oprah is like, we have to fix this. We have to put all of them to sleep and correct the love portion. And Puck gets to work again. Because now he make mistake pass for that night. You get and you know are you getting a very interesting play and finally um lysander and demetrius were just looking for themselves they've just been looking for themselves because they want to fight each other and puck has been causing confusion he reformed to he will you know fairies can imitate humans who imitate the voice of one and say come this way i'm here that one will run you know just to make sure they miss their way so that they don't fight because he knows that he has messed up badly that night meanwhile titania is just there loving and ass. Can you imagine? <laughs> Auburn is doing this just because of a little boy she took. You can see fairies act like humans too. Also, Puck and Auburn enters into the glade to find Titania in love with Bottom and celebrate the success of their revenge. Auburn orders the exchange of the Indian boy for the antidote for the love spell and Titania complies. Auburn and Titania leave before Puck returns Bottom's head to that of a human. Now, while Puck is trying to set, put all of them to sleep and make sure he removes the, he, um, 
remove the love spell and all that to ensure that everybody fall in love with the is still in love with the right person. They also discovered that Titania son worked. She's loving an ass and they're happy. They made her realize that now we do. Uh -huh. Now you give me that Indian boy. Then I'll remove this nonsense. This love portion that is making you love an ass. Ah, Titania know that oh he got me here. Because there's no how on a good day a royalty a queen will love a human with a donkey face. She said, oh man, you guys got me here. You got me here. And it worked. He got the boy he wanted. The king got his revenge. And he also made sure that the lovers, the love spell on the lovers was removed. Now, this lover slept till morning. That was the morning of Theseus' wedding. The day of Theseus, the day of Theseus' wedding. Now, Theseus, of course. Furthermore, Theseus enters to find the Athenian lovers asleep. And as he wakes them, Becos on the used to join him at his wedding, wedding feast. After Titius and Hippolyta are wedded, Demetrius and Helena and Lysander and Hermia are also joined in holy matrimony. Now, as he taps them, you will see the place where one will say, My Lord, I do not know how we got ourselves here. But every, that's why they say it summer night dream. They seem to remember faintly the event, but at the same time, they can't remember. You know that kind of dream you can't remember, you can't remember. That's why a midsummer, it was midsummer, it was in the night, more like a dream. You understand? All of a sudden, Demetrius actually cares about Helena now. They did the thing in the right way that Demetrius and Helena will see each other. Lysander and Hermia, Lysander love spell was removed. So he's still in love with Hermia. So you could see two happy ladies and two happy men. You know, Theseus found them and now they are heading to the palace for the wedding. Okay? Mm. The man to see the play, Bottom and his friends have prepared. Okay. So at the end of the day, they left the bush happily. Three couples left the bush. Um, two in couples in love. Demetrius in love with Helena, Lysander in love with, still in love with Hermia, okay? At Queen's house, the craftsmen are all wondering where Bottom is, and they are all considering dropping their performance before Bottom triumphantly enters the house and declares that the play must continue. To the amusement of, the, of Theseus and other real play present, the play is comically performed, which earns the praise for their performance. You understand? Now, that play they acted is not something that might, I don't think, okay, let me not say what I don't know. But the, it's a play within a play. It's a very interesting play. It's also the cause of true love. It's about this character now. Two characters. Um, what are their names again? Bottom. And um, I don't. I'm forgetting. What is the summary of the play? There is a wall. It was. I think it was flutes that played the part of a wall. There was one. They all had their parts to play, but we don't really need that in this summary. The play within the play is talking about these two couples who are in love. But they are separated by a wall. That wall signifies their father's refusal of their love. You understand? It's just like the story of Romeo and Juliet. That play within the play is Romeo and Juliet's story. They were, they were, it was only through the world they could talk. You understand? It was through the world they could talk. And it was humans that played the part of the wall. Then there was the moon. Whenever the moon shines, they will come out. This one will stay the other side of the wall. The other side of the wall. You could see the um, lack of freedom to express their own love. And though this is how they'll, they'll now talk about how much they love each other. And, you know, there was this day the girl was scared by a lion. That is the female character in the play within a play. And as she, she ran away. And there was a little bleed. And the male character came in. That is Pyramus and Thisbe. I remember their name. Pyramus came in and saw a knife on the floor, blood stained. He assumed it was her. He assumed the lion killed her. And that was how he killed himself. And she also came and saw him dying. And it, it's just Romeo and Juliet's story. So at the end of the day, you know, the story ended well. And in the final scene, Puck enters into the castle and explains that he is there to tie up or settle everything. Titiana enters the castle and bless the lovers so that they all stay true to one another. As no harm before Theseus and Hippolyta. That was why they came in the first place. They came to bless the union. That's what fairies do. They came to bless the union. They came to, they bless their marital bed. They said they would be fruitful, you know, peace. Now, Puck then makes one final address to the audience, stating that if the play has offended anyone, they should remember it was all a dream. Also, when the play within a play is completed, the lovers go to bed. The fairies briefly emerge to bless the sleeping couple with the protective charm and then disappears. Only Puck remains to ask the audience for forgiveness and approval. The lovers go to bed and the fairies, they all bless them. You know, the lovers are happy. They also got them married. Um, 
Hermia and the Sander, the Mitchell and Helena. Now you might be asking, but is they said Athena and Lefa father doesn't approve. Now he had no choice. He, Demetrius that he wanted to marry his daughter used to be interested but Demetrius don't seem interested anymore he's now in love with Hermia so the father can't necessarily force him so the father will just allow her marry whom she loves guys so this is what the play is all about a midsummer night dream you can drop your questions in this um comment section section like I said in this play they won't they won't ask you essay question discuss examine they will just pick a, any line or conversation the right speaker a speaker b one the advantage is work is at the bottom they usually write the act and the scene act one scene this act two scene that in fact they'll write the line that is advantage why they'll write the acts they'll write the scene and they'll write the line so that's it. so it's important that as you're reading you know where under which act and which scene each event takes place why we write the act and the scene and the line so it is very easy to know who speaker a was who speaker b was where that always know where each act takes place act one Theseus palace act two in the woods i think three in the woods four in the i think it was five that was not back at Theseus. basically it was just two two scenes so it's, it's good to know where each scene takes place they always ask it and sometimes they'll underline an expression and tell you what figure of speech was used there you know different things so that is how this your exam will go. The advantage, like I said, is again the right act and scene. Now, if you have any question or something for me to clarify, comment, okay? Uh, this is the best I can do. I don't know if I did justice. If I don't know if I did or not, still give me a thumbs up and still subscribe. Your work is drawing closer. I wish you guys all the very best. Like, I'm super proud of everyone. I get your feedbacks all the time and I am excited drop your questions please subscribe help me help me subscribe to my channel you know if you believe in what i'm doing feel free to subscribe you know it doesn't take anything from you i guess please thank you bye